Now that we've talked about the ideas behind delta G, delta H, and delta S, let's put some numbers to them. So here we have this reaction with ammonia nitrate breaking apart into its ammonium and nitrate ions. So here we have our delta H value and our delta S value. And if we look at our delta S value, we can see that it makes sense that it would be a positive number because we're going from solids to ions in the aqueous phase. Okay, so that positive number makes sense. The one thing that you have to be really careful about with these numbers is that delta H and delta S are generally reported in different units. So if we ever want to combine them into one equation, we have to get them into the same units. So I'm going to go ahead and convert my delta S value into kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And that way, whenever I calculate delta G, it will pop out in terms of kilojoules. And so they ask us if this reaction is going to be spontaneous at 30 degrees Celsius and if it can perform work. So we know if we want to answer questions about spontaneity or work, we need to calculate delta G. And in this instance, we have a delta H value and we have a delta S value, so we're going to use our go-to thermodynamic equation. Okay, so they gave us delta H, delta S. We need to convert our temperature into Kelvin. And so this is going to be 303 Kelvin. And so to solve this, we're just going to plug in the delta H value from above, our temperature, and our delta S value in the correct units into that equation. And so once you have the numbers plugged into the equation, and go ahead and just type that into your calculator. And the value that you get out for this is negative 4.89 kilojoules per mole. And so that is an amount of work it could do. We would say that this reaction can do 4.89 kilojoules per mole work. And because it can do work and we have a negative delta G, we also can tell that it's, of course, spontaneous. Okay, so our reaction here is spontaneous at 30 degrees Celsius. So now let's look and see, is our reaction, so same reaction, spontaneous at a colder temperature? So here it says now that we're running the reaction at negative 50 degrees Celsius which would be the same as 223 Kelvin. Okay, so we're going to use the same equation, our go-to equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And we'll plug in the same thermodynamic values from above, just with a different temperature. So now, when I plug in those values with my new temperature, I calculate a delta G of positive 3.81 kilojoules per mole. So now our reaction is non-spontaneous at this temperature, and we would have to do work on it to make it proceed. And so then they pose the question, when does a reaction go from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous as written? And so this temperature, we'll say, is when delta G is equal to zero. Because we're looking for delta G to switch from being negative to positive, And the point right where that happens is just going to be zero. So if we want to figure out what that temperature is for a particular reaction, we are going to just go ahead and say zero is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And we can rewrite this as T delta S is equal to delta H. And if we divide by delta S, we just can see that that turnover temperature is going to be delta H divided by delta S.
Oh, I'm sorry, I guess you can't see that with this watermark. Let me write that again. So here we'll have that turnover temperature equal to delta H divided by delta S. And so for this equation, we'll have our 28.05 kilojoule per mole for the delta H divided by our entry P value in the correct unit, so that'll be 0 0.1087 kilojoules per mole kelvin. And we'll end up with a temperature of 258 Kelvin. And if we wanted to get that temperature in Celsius, we would just subtract off the 273 and say that our turnover temperature is about negative 15 degrees Celsius. Okay. And so we can see that below that temperature we have a non-spontaneous reaction but when we, we, when we were above that temperature we have a spontaneous reaction and if we were to run it right at negative 15 degrees Celsius then our delta G would just be zero. So now let's talk about the difference between delta G and delta G standard. So for standard conditions, we would have to have one molar concentrations for everything, and we would be running the reaction at 298 Kelvin. And so here, we have the dissociation of acetic acid, and we can see that it has a really small KEQ, much less than one. So they ask us to consider what's favored. Is it going to be products or reactants favored? And Keep in mind KEQ is related to products over reactants. So if we have a really small K, we must have a lot of reactants and a big denominator making the number small. So for this, the reactants are going to be favored. And then they say, well, if we have one molar of everything, what is going to be the value of Q? And so to f calculate Q, we're going to set it up like we do our KEQ expressions. So we'll have our concentration of acetate ions to the power of minus one, or to the power of one, and protons to the power of one, divided by our acetic acid concentration. And so if all of our concentrations are one molar, We'll just have 1 times 1 over 1, and our Q ends up just being 1. And so, in that case, then we can compare it to our KEQ. And so Q of 1 is going to be greater than our KEQ of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Because that's like having 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8. And so that means our Q is too big. We have too many products. And so we've discussed before if our Q is bigger than KEQ, the reaction is going to proceed so that we use up some of those extra products that we have to make more reactants. And so that means the reaction is going to proceed in the reverse direction, or to the left, we would say. Okay, so on the next slide, we have some more questions about this, where we've done most of them already, but now it's asking us down here how we can relate delta G standard and KEQ and what will the value of delta G standard be. And so we do have a way to directly relate delta G standard and KEQ. We have this equation here. And so really the only thing that changes delta G standard is our KEQ.
and temperature, but delta G standard and KEQ go hand in hand together. Okay, and so if we wanted to solve what delta G standard is for this equation, or we can plug in our value for R. And kilojoules. Plug in our temperature in Kelvin. And then the natural log of our KEQ value, which is that 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And you don't want to forget the negative sign out in front. And so when you plug this in, you get a value of about 27 kilojoules per mole for the delta G standard. And this makes sense because under standard conditions, when our KEQ is smaller than our Q and we're moving in the reverse direction, that's not going to be spontaneous in the forward direction, which is what our delta G standard would be telling us. Okay. And so whenever your KEQ is less than 1, your delta G standard will be positive. So delta G standard can tell us something about whether products or reactants are favored. And so here we have a summary of that idea. So for that reaction, it would have been non-spontaneous with one molar of everything. So if we have the scenario where Q is less than KEQ, that must mean we have too many reactants. So the reaction will proceed in the forward direction to use up some of those reactants, make more products. And so the sign on delta G will be negative. And if Q is greater than KEQ, we'll have too many products. And so the reaction will shift to the left to use up some of those extra products and make more reactants. And so that's going backwards. So that will give us a positive delta G. And when Q is equal to KEQ, that just means that we're at equilibrium. So we don't need to proceed any direction. And our delta G is just going to be equal to zero. Okay, so we can see how equilibrium is really intertwined with our thermodynamics. So now in this case, we have the same reaction. We're still looking at the acetic acid dissolve, er, dissociating. And now they want us to figure out what the delta G of the reaction is if we don't have one molar concentrations of everything. Okay, and so our first step is going to be to figure out, well, what is our Q? Where do we sit with regards to equilibrium? And so we'll use our same Q expression as before, just from products over reactants. And so we'll end up with our 0 0.0030 molar for the acetate ion to the power of 1 times our proton concentration to the power of 1 divided by our acetic acid concentration, which is just going to be 1 molar. And our Q ends up being 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And if you remember from the last slide, our KEQ for this reaction is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So we can see here that our Q is smaller than our KEQ. So we must have too many reactants and not enough products. And so in that case, our reaction is going to have to proceed in the forward direction.
and if it's proceeding in the forward direction toward products, that means we're going to have a negative delta G of reaction. It's going to spontaneously go toward products. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. So the equation we're going to use when we're not at standard conditions is this delta G equals delta G standard plus RT ln Q. So we figured out delta G standard with the KEQ and we figured out Q with our concentrations. So we'll just go ahead and plug in. And once we have our delta G standard and our Q plugged in with R and T, we can calculate what this number ends up being. And it is negative 2.24 kilojoules per mole. And so we can see this matches with our prediction of a negative delta G because we know the reaction is going spontaneously toward products. Okay, and so that's all I have for thermal. Do some more practice problems, apply these ideas, make sure you're careful with your units, and it'll be great. And so, you know, just keep cool, and you can do it, okay? Keep up the hard work.